Hi, and welcome to episode two of our oscilloscope blog series. Today we are looking at a blog that we called Oscilloscope or Digitizer for Wideband Measurements. So if you need to make wideband measurements, should you use a scope or a digitizer? And I have Erin East with me. You know her from Scopes University. <laughs> um, she's also contributed to the blog in the past, and I'm sure we'll see some blog posts from her in the future. But this one is not from you. Is it who, who authored this one? No, Sherry DiTomasi actually wrote this one. And we start out by talking about waveform reconstruction. So oscilloscopes are able to reconstruct that waveform and show you the interpolated waveform on screen, whereas ADCs are only able to show you the dots. Yeah, so you know both oscilloscopes and digitizers have a specified sample rate, right? and they just go through and sample it. But with an oscilloscope, you get sine x over x reconstruction built in to the hardware. Um, whereas a digitizer, you probably will have to do some of that reconstruction on the back end. Yeah. So if you look at the screenshot we pop up, um, there's going to be on the left side, there's just the, the points that were plotted. On the right, we have the interpolation. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe you want the interpolation, maybe you don't. There's actually some um, controversy over sine x over x interpolation. Um, if you want to learn more about that, there's a great video um, from Bald Engineer. He did a, a talk on that. We'll put a, a card in the link in the description about why you want sine x over x reconstruction in your scope. Um, the other thing that oscilloscopes, one of the big differences between oscilloscopes and digitizers is oscilloscopes have a lot of built-in measurement and analysis capabilities. So you know, you're looking at like jitter in real time I on an oscilloscope, whereas a digitizer, you have an FPGA that you can code some stuff into. You can maybe code some filters. Um, but it's really more about massaging that data as it comes through the ADC and less about getting actionable data straight out of a di digitizer. And then the blog talked about one more thing. Uh, the other thing was ENOB. So digitizers actually have a much higher ENOB. So that means you're mm -hmm. able to see a waveform more true to what's actually coming out of your device. You have a lot of signal fidelity there. But that's looking at a much more narrow bandwidth. So scopes have an extremely wide bandwidth range. And uh, you're able to look at a lot more with scopes because of that. And of course, ENOB is effective number of bits, and Melissa did a great video, and yeah. I think you helped out with some animations and stuff on effective number of bits and measurement noise in one of the Scopes University videos. We'll also put a card for that and link to that in the description. Check that out if you want to learn more about that. Um, one of the things that digitizers often do is implement a digital down converter. So uh, we'll pop up a brief block diagram for that, but basically you limit your bandwidth significantly. But by limiting your bandwidth, you're able to get a much higher me measurement resolution from your ADC. Um, and there are some digital tricks you can do with a normal oscilloscope, even if it doesn't have a built-in uh, DDC or digital down converter. But um, that's one of the big differences between a digitizer and a scope. And of course, with a digitizer, you can stream data pretty much nonstop real-time to some sort of acquisition system, whereas an oscilloscope is more for... Uh, like, you know, debugging analysis, benchmarking your analysis. tests, real-time analysis type stuff. Um, so that's the blog. Check out, we have a new blog. Uh, you can go to Google Oscilloscope blog and Google will show up. Uh, I think we, we have number one spot in Google for that, so just hit I'm feeling lucky or something. Um, if you <laughs> don't want to read the blog, we're going to continue to have a new video every week for the blog uh, that recaps what that blog is about. So maybe a little extra information, um, maybe a little more information in the blog, depends on what you're into. Um, so that's all. Um, there's a webcast so if you, and an app note for this. So if you want to learn more about making wideband measurements and whether you should use a scope or a digitizer, check out the webcast that's in the description. And there's an app note, understanding the differences between oscilloscopes and digitizers for wideband signal acquisitions. So you can check out both of those if this is something you're interested in. Um, also, we're looking for guest bloggers on our oscilloscopes blog. So if you have a project, you're using a Keysight 1000X or any Keysight equipment, or it's just a cool project and you want to show it off, we would love to hear about it. You can uh, put a comment in the description. You can message us at or email us at moreinfo at keysight.com and put guest blog in the title. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and maybe... We'll be talking about your project next next time. So that's all for today. Make sure you subscribe to the Keysight Oscilloscopes YouTube channel. Check the acquisition uh, application note and webcast, and we'll see you next time.